Welcome everyone to the experimental show by the Glass Academy. Today we've got an unusual treat for you. The experimental show is brought to you by the Glass Academy. We are a private studio located in Dearborn, Michigan. And each week we do unique and exciting things and share a link. So tonight's show is being taped after the classes have been held out those back windows, it's dark, it's in Michigan, and so this tells us it's well after nine o'clock on a summer day, everyone's gone, and one of the questions I'm gonna ask you guys later in our e-news is are you a night owl? Because Chris is, I am not. So we're gonna tape the show tonight, Chris is working, and I'm doing the filming. My name is Michelle, and Chris and I are the owners of The Glass Academy. So I'll show you a little bit of the setup. He's gonna be making these glass tiles today. They're a custom job for um, a certain client. And I'm kind of panning over all the equipment that's gonna be used. He's gonna make this tile probably like eight times or so during this video. So you're not gonna miss anything because we're gonna repeat it quite a few times. First, what you do is you take the hot glass and you apply some color. He is intentionally letting it kind of fold in on itself and twist on itself. Because as you saw in the beginning tile, and you'll see in the completed tiles, that allowing this color mixture to fold over itself gives a really interesting pattern to the tiles. Now the thing that's going bright orange is the glass. It's actually clear glass with these two greens in it. And right after he cuts it, he's going to use this higher oxygen torch to go in and just kind of touch up. And when I adjust the, the flame on the lens, not the flame on the lens, the exposure on the lens, you could see some of those swirls. Now again, we're going to go over all these steps. So um, if you're like, wait, what's happening? What's that? and I don't talk about it right now, just know that I'm gonna talk about it in an upcoming episode. Chris has been doing these casting, these tiles for an architecture firm here in Metro Detroit for quite some time. When they have interesting or unique jobs, they give them a call and he creates a tile specific to this client or the event. So the tile is poured into this square casting, we call it, and it's something that we make um, these are designed specifically for the job. Now, it's late night, Chris is bored, and he's showing off his twirling abilities. But there's the mold, and you can also notice that he sets up all the tools and equipment so it's really easy by the station he's working at. So we're gonna go over the setup a little bit. This is an oxygen um, acetylene torch, has this really nice tip on it. You adjust it here, and you plug it into the oxygen and the acetylene, which are these two big tanks. Yes, we lug them all over the studio depending on what our needs are. They're not hard to move, it's leverage. They stay tied to the hand cart and you wheel them in place. They were using them for class and they were on the other side of the studio. So Chris is just moving it closer to him. When you're doing these castings, I mean, the studio's ours, so we're able to move any way that we want to adjust the equipment to work for the job at hand. These are the gauges. I don't know what everything means, but they do. So you can tell if they're getting low or if they're empty, if they're on, if they're not on. We turn them off every night, wheel them away from the furnace. But here, Chris will take the ends and just plug them right into the adapters. So now it's getting a gas-air mixture, and when the time is right, he'll light it up. Wooden paddles are essential for this job. We use some of our older ones that aren't that fancy because the castings will burn them pretty quick. We got his frit trays for color. And then this is our color shelf. You can see we got reds and oranges and yellows. He's using greens. When he does these jobs, he records his color pattern. So if 10 years down the road, they add another building on and want more tiles, he can add them because he'll know the exact colors. So this job doesn't take much, casting doesn't take much preparation. There's the torch, he had the wood panels, got the color he's gonna lay out and at this point I'm kind of teasing him because you'll see he has a green, a dark green. 
then he's gonna add in a light green. And then he has a third tray, but there's no color in it. So it's the imaginary color. Let me show you it up close. There it is. Oh, so beautiful. So nothing in that third tray. He only needed the two colors. Coming from the furnace, he dips into one, then immediately goes into the other. At this point, the glass is so hot, um, it's just going to stick that color right on. And he doesn't want the whole thing to be super coated. He just wants a light coat. Gave it a real quick flash in the furnace. And now um, cuts it into the mold. Uses the paddle to kind of like push anything down. You can see the corners filled up a little bit more. One thing about glass is you can never get it all the way in those corners. It's always going to have a rounded corner because it's a liquid. It's thick and goopy. It will not flow to a sharp corner. That's okay. The client knows this. Now he's in his other hand, he's holding the ball and the glass is dripping off of it. And my comment there to him was like, hey, this torch uh, hose is kind of close. Don't let it dip drip on that, but he's aware. It doesn't like fall off that close or that fast. So he'll set the gathering ball aside. This has to cool a little bit longer while he works on the next step. Um, in this casting, again, when I adjust the camera, you can see all those cool designs. Once it's put into the casting, it doesn't need that long. Um, it just kind of sits in there two, three minutes, and then shapes it. If you leave it in there too long, it will break. So you don't want to let it be in there too long. And yes, we do one casting where we preheat it. Ball. This is a pipe that has a big round ball. It sits on the furnace and it's going to sit there because by the time he's ready to use it again, it will be perfect. These are the shears. They're a specialty type of shear for casting and there's some of the scrap glass that was made. So to put this in the annealer oven, the next step is to get it out of the mold and you, all you do is pick it up by that handle and flip it upside down and now you have your casting. You might notice that there's a ledge or a lip and that's how it stays in the building. Uh, they build it to suit and it's got this little ledge on it so it will stick out on one side and be glued on the back side into the annealing oven it goes. I think he needs 75 of these tiles and at this point he was about halfway done. So again, showing you all the different colors in there. The orange is only because the glass is hot. Here's the gathering ball that he just cut that extra bit off just a metal ball with a clear coat of glass on it. See that lip on the tile again, that ledge. The wood will not take too much heat out of the glass, so it's a great tool to flip it on. And the annealing oven is right near us, so he goes in there, and depending on which side of the annealer, um, it's ready for He just goes in there and stacks them up. Although it looks super hot, it will not move in there. This, however, is still very hot. So on occasion he dips it in water, you can see all that steam coming off. Cools the mold enough that he can do another one. If the mold is too hot, it will stick. When we do jobs like these, the customers pay for the color, the time, the labor, the materials. We are not a high production factory. These are not machine made. Uh, we don't have 20 guys pumping out tiles. This is a one-off job, very specialty. Chris has been doing these jobs since the beginning of our company. And he really enjoys them. It's pretty meditative to do uh, work like this. And he likes working late night, so he will do these tiles. At the end of the night, he'll throw some cullet into the furnace and allow it to melt. And then the next morning, when Jake and the guys come into work, they'll have a fresh tank of glass to use. Paglia 
videos on metal paddle, he chose that instead of the wood one. When it's right finished casting and you use the wood, there is a chance that it will scar the glass or stick to the glass because it's so hot, so sometimes he uses a metal paddle. Made in USA, you gotta love it. The gathering ball, when it gets too much glass on it, it gets too big. So he's just using the end of the marver here to kind of scrape it off the pipe. And then he uses his casting shears to cut off the excess. It's too hot right now, so it could just sit outside the air for a few minutes while he takes care of the tile. Now, sometimes in these images, you'll see him blowing on it. Really, you know, that just kind of makes us feel good. His breath on there for two seconds is not doing anything, but kind of makes you feel productive, like you're like, oh, I'm, I'm doing it at the perfect temperature. And again, it just slides over to our Neeler oven. So we've got two of these rolling tonight. And um, on one of the later tiles, you're gonna see some of the class products in the Neeler. Now, you, we know second design is the glass that we use, we remelt it. There is nothing wrong with that glass. It was just too much, it's getting too big. That glass will cool off in that bucket later on during the week. We'll shovel it into our recycled furnace, add a little more cobalt, and then our second design products are made with that beautiful. Right, there it is, the casting. And each one is unique. Look at how cool the color looks. So cool. So cool. have made is a square but you can't pick it up if it's just a square you have to have some sort of handle on it so when you cast this one I want you to notice that the steel bar attached to the mold that's our casting handle and also notice that it's open it stabilizes the mold the way it is for leverage and it has a, it's a hollow loop so that it doesn't heat so most of the heat is going to stay in that cube and allow us to reach the handle and be able to pick it up as needed. We do have welders in the studio, a lot of mold, metal capabilities in the far back of the studio. To the left, you'll see this awesome pine tree. He just loves the studio. It's so nice having natural plants around the studio. It gives such a cool feel to what we do. I absolutely love it. And now going over back into the annealing oven. This time he's going to put it on the right side and you can see some of the meditation globes from the class in there. It looks like we had eight students in that class and some of the production from the day as well. To the right of this annealing oven is the digitry. This is 900 degrees is what it is holding at. That's what the H stands for. And digitry is the computer that we use. And here's another one. This one's a Honeywell. The furnace was at 2,155 degrees. It's a little hotter when we do the castings um, because the door stays open and you need it kind of that flowy look. <laughs> It is nighttime here at the Glass Academy. It does make it a lot brighter when you look in the furnace. I prefer to wear eyeglasses when I'm blowing glass. However, Chris uh, just kind of squints. His eyes are not as bright, open as mine, so he's fine without wearing safety glasses. Those are kind of a personal choice when you own your own studio. Using the torch now, he's gonna torch the top. And that's just so you don't see the cut mark. Notice this one isn't flowing off the pipe as fast as the other one was in the beginning. But he's very aware of what's happening. So how many of you out there are late night owls? Because this is a late night project. I film him for this and then at some point I decide I'm gonna leave and he continues to cast until the annular is full. My brain kind of shuts off after a minute, but the physical labor is much easier to keep going. The mold is 
perfectly square. There cannot be any undercuts in it. So if there were, it would not be able to come out of the mold. So just like a pancake, you flip it over, it comes right out and you can see the corners are rounded. I'll do a video in the end of this. Um, you'll see the true colors of it and my hands holding it. So you'll get an idea of the skin. Chris is wearing a Gathering Point show t-shirt. Every Tuesday night on YouTube, we do another show called The Gathering Point. And you're welcome to watch that. Our YouTube channel has many different varieties of shows that we produce. And tonight's show is called The Experimental Show. Now, solid pieces like this do take longer to cool or anneal. This will be on a longer cycle. I believe it's about 16 hours to cool this completely. If we're doing blown glass all day, it can cool faster, but when it's solid and thick like this, it's best if it cools for at least 16 hours. low in the background that is normally not in the hot shop we were doing some maintenance and repair so the high low is there but here is the finished castings you can see how the color has swirled the two colors it doesn't take much color to be reflective and shiny and all of that you can see the rounded corners and the lip the edge this will be the top of the casting the part that people will see and this one had a little more light green in it. There were two different styles to me. I'm not sure which one in the video. I'm thinking it was more the one on the left. The bubbles are something the clients absolutely love, so we like bringing those into the glass. for watching everyone this was the glass academy you are watching experimental show number 88 please visit our youtube channel as there are many more exciting shows to follow and if you like this video go ahead and subscribe to our channel it doesn't cost anything and it's free why not have a great day